the guru of checking the email. Just a second. Oh, I think we're back. I think. Sounds on. Good. Okay, so they heard all that. So is, is audit video back on? No, nope, never mind. That's not even the right thing. I think we're. I think we are though. Yeah. Okay. Can somebody yeah. tell us we are. Yeah, we are. Thanks, Soup. What would we do without you? He's just saying, yeah, right. Did you mention that <coughs> you and Dave no. had to share? Don't mention that. No. Did you mention that between a four and a four and a half, you'd go for a five and a half first? Yeah. Who asked the question? Do you remember who it asked the question? It was a username. Uh, oh, it was Minimoto, right, but his, right. he he told us his name is Ed. Yeah. If you're if you're looking for your first plane, go for a five and a half, oh. or. What for? For getting disconnected. Sean's blaming Megan. But oh, of course, mate. We, that's why we have Megan here. She's the only female in the room. It must <laughs> be her fault. Thank you for spotting that, Sean. I would go with a five and a half or a five because of what I'm doing right now. <coughs> when you're using a shooting board, you want some length and you want some weight. And uh, that's something that the four and a half locks. You need, the more distance you have between the blade and the front of the plane, the better. You cannot start back here. You have to be engaged. So the more distance you have here, the more of a run you get to take before you uh, actually, your blade actually engages the wood. Now what I'm doing is just checking to get these two pieces parallel. I should have had Super Dave here demonstrating. Has he finished that chisel yet? Dave has an eternal chisel. He's been he's been working on it. When did he get that chisel? A year and a half ago? No. Seventeen months. Seventeen months. Now I want to check and make sure that this is square. Yeah. Not quite, so I'm going to adjust my blade. I, I'm, I'm a little bit, when you I check it, it. You can see it on the end. Yes. Yeah, you can see it. You see where the little chamfer stops? So what I need to do is I need to have the blade projecting more from the bottom than the top. So I'm going to push the blade down like this while lifting up the lateral adjustment lever. And that should throw the blade in the direction I want. Wait, 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 wait. check the chamfer. So would that mean your sides are not square either? Uh, I don't know. No, it's maybe just that the blade wasn't in there perpendicular to the sole. So you see where I am right now? No, no, no. I mean the sides of your board. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'll have to go back and fix that. But that'll just be a pass. If you're gonna do it, you may as well go for perfection. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> mm? ah. Now we'll square up the end. Now, this part has to get, you want it perfect on the end grain because that's actually what's going to show in the finished joint and you can't do anything to fix it after the fact. Okay. So those surfaces are done. Now, I got to remember how to do this too. It's been a while, but I think I got it. Thank you. Now we'll go ahead, fire off the questions, and do the inside face. And I'm going to go ahead and mark, well, actually, yeah, I will mark it. And even though if I mark it, I'm not going to be able to take it off. Uh, I don't have one of those uh, dry erase, do I? Have I got one of those dry erase markers here? No, Jake? No. 
nice about them is they don't go very, yes, I do. That is, isn't it? So, this will be the face pin. Tail. Now remember, if I was building something, I would have had to finish this end as well. So now I'm going to clean up the inside face. Philip Lawrence wants to know uh, if you're coming to Kansas City. Well, you know, my uh, I wouldn't say my days of travel are over, but I'm certainly trying to restrict how much time I'm away. If we are committing to doing uh, six weeks of uh, vet workshops, purple art workshops, then my out-of-town travel is going to be severely curtailed. So, Philip, come here. We need you. In fact, let me... Wait. What? Philip is one of the vets. Who, who just asked if I, when I was Philip going? Philip Lawrence, yeah. Phil Lawrence. Was, what, what class? Uh, what year? You don't remember? Get him to tell me. What, cl what, what class was he in? Give him a second. There's like a 10-second delay. Right. Anyway, come back. <coughs> so let me, uh, let me address the civilians. We need six or seven civilians to take the class every time we do it. And you guys are critical to the uh, success of these classes. In fact, talk to any of the vets and you'll tell them, they'll tell you it's when those two sides of the room bond, that's when things start to happen that you can't even describe. They're so phenomenal. Get George to come on here and tell you about it. So we're going to need a lot of students in order to make this work. If you haven't seen our new workshop, you'll be wanting to come. All right, I'm going to go through and get rid of all of the planar marks. I don't want to leave any uh, plane tracks. And I don't know if you're noticing, but if you, you see the shaving... It, there's no uh, there's no defined edges. Now I'm going to set my plane on there and check that, and it's nice and flat. Feels beautiful. Feel that, Jake? Tell them. It feels wonderful. Lovely, just dandy. Am I going to do the outside? No, because that'll give me a chance to get rid of the. Uh, that's going to give me a chance to get rid of scribe lines. the scribe lines. Yeah. So this is the inside face of what would be the tailboard. Phil was from the second class in 2017, by the way. Second class in 2017. I got to get my pictures up on the wall. Nick Brown is here, who was just in uh, one of your recent hey, classes. Nick. And he highly recommends the course. It's an amazing experience, and you'll learn a lot of woodworking, <coughs> and it's with awesome people. Nick could very well be here. Yeah, Nick. Why don't you come out, ne why don't you come out Nick, next time we do the live broadcast? Just be here. Next time. If he left now, he'd get here before the end of the <laughs> And still catch the middle one. Nick's one of the few locals we have. And Nick also did Im incredible work. Hey, how, how much, you don't have the disc, you can't go out there, can you? <laughs> Sorry, I'm dry. I can, I can hear that really well. Did you? <laughs> yeah. We should have Costco sponsor this show with that, that <laughs> oh good water. We're not allowed to say that? You can okay. say whatever you want. So now the layout. So we got to pay attention to what we're doing. Um, we need to decide how f how much we want those to stick out beyond. And.
And I am going to suggest, you know, I'm, I'm, ad, I'm, uh, what? Do we use the thickness of the blade? I'm going to use the thickness of this, I think. Let me just uh, get some idea. Where's that box that we did? Mm-hmm. You're pointing, but I don't see. Sure. Oh, Frick, where's that idea. box? It's right there. <coughs> So what I'm looking for is how far do we want these to stick out. Okay, so that's probably twice the amount is there. So I'm going to go with that. And what I'm going to do is simply set this on top of my pin board. Drop it down. Okay, now Jake. No. Okay. But I'm thinking about we got to put we got to cut a rabbit on here, so this is going to be, <coughs> yeah, okay, this will be the bottom. So on the tail boards or on the face side, I'm going to go very light, go really heavy on the edge, heavy on the inside, heavy on the edge. Now I'm going to go ahead and cut our rabbit. I got to give a shout out to uh, Lee Nelson Toolworks, Tom in particular. He uh, he had committed to uh, helping us with the uh, Purple Heart project, and he donated two mortise chisels, a quarter and a three a, a quarter and a yeah. half, to every uh, vet in the class. So that was a uh, Sizable donation. Thank you. But I also have to get a, a big shout out to, uh, shoot, I better save that for a little while. Do we decide out who? We, we, we uh, at the vendor show that we were at, we met with all the Woodcraft store owners. And what we were doing is looking for owners that, whose store would want to sponsor a vet each time we taught the class. Now, I have to tell you about George and Everett because. They've been doing it all along, and they're stepping up to uh, covering the entire cost, bringing a vet when we teach the class. Now, the reason why Jake said ooh is because we knocked a big chunk of wood off of there, but it doesn't matter. That's going to be on the part that gets cut off. And Neil, who who uh, has the store in where? Allentown? I thought it was Harrisburg. Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. And it's coming in January. Yes, Neil's coming to the class. Okay, so we got that one. So now we're going to set it out here because we have to take into account that we're, this is going to be a little bit thinner. Is that uniform thickness all the way across? Yeah. Well, you didn't think it was? Yeah, just feel it. Feel the, feel the exposure from one end to the other. Yeah. Okay. Look at it. Do we have a video on how to make the uh, wooden fence for the skew block plane? We don't. That was a that was a question by Jonathan. Uh, I, thought, I think I we're going to start selling them. Actually, we're going to make really fancy ones. Now nobody has one as fancy as Super Dave does. Hey, where would they see pictures of that? On, our Instagram. on Instagram. If you go on our Instagram, <coughs> Jake made a fence for Super Dave out of snake wood. Of course, they had to go through the shop and find the most expensive piece of wood I had in here, but only for him. I'd love to be able to see out of these glasses. To be clear, Dave insisted that we use the most expensive. Something about the wood. Something about that was never going to get used anyway. Wouldn't have to worry about any scratches on it. And the answer is no, I haven't done, I haven't done something like that, but I can. Okay, so there's my, there's my layout as far as the marking gauge. Now, actually, that's not true. So now, I've got to go in, I've got to allow for that, for that uh, little bit. So here's what I've got to do next. I've got to come in here and I've got to measure this cruel. <coughs> and I've got to go on here. <coughs> Now I'm gonna I'm going to 
going to uh, chamfer the outside edge too, so that's why I'm doing it out there. That'll give me a mark to follow. Didn't do these because they're going to get cut off. Okay, now we can go ahead and lay out the joint. Make sure that is standing plumb in the vise. And I uh, I talked Lonnie into buying a saw. So Lonnie, I hope you're paying attention on how to use that effectively. Make sure your board's standing plumb. <coughs> and uh, I'll say this, and even if I've said it before, because you have a saw that registers in your hand the same way every time you pick it up, never changes, and because it's nice and heavy, gravity will actually train you where plum is, and you'll eventually be able to even make a plum cut with your eyes closed. You'll also learn where 10 degrees is to the left and 10 degrees is to the right, and you just learn those three. Believe it or not, that'll actually come. That only works if your board is standing plum. That's the one of the two variables this is the easiest one to control. So every time you put the board in the vise, make sure it's standing plumb. Okay, I need a pair of dividers. Normally I have two pair. I better get them out. I'm going to establish my outside half pin first. I'm going to go with oh, just a little less than a quarter of an inch maybe. Put a mark in the end of the board. Put a mark in the end of the board. i got to be able to see, Jake. I hope this doesn't screw up your exposure. And I'll go ahead and draw that in. Oh, yeah, this is another reason why we save the planing of the outside till just before we assemble because we got to, it'll allow us to get rid of these pen marks. You don't want those left on there. I'd actually like to have a pencil right now. Since we just turned on your lamp, Jake was wondering if you guys are still planning on making and selling those mushrooms for the lamps for those of us without lights. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got a thousand things in the works. What what Jake was that? Jake? Or vet? Those guys need those guys need to be posting the work they're doing, so I see that uh, they're putting those tools to good use. Okay, so that's my, oh, I was going to use the other one, but I want to use these ones. Now I'm going to go three tails, so starting on the half pin line, one, two, got to cross the opposite line, one, two, don't want to leave any marks in here either because this is, this is a finished surface. Better pay better attention to what I'm doing. That's a little bit too small. Open it up a bit. Now, I'm often asked how big to make these. Well, I always want that. I'm going to use that. I always want these to be thinner, excuse me, than what a machine can do. And the uh, current dovetail routers can get down to 3 sixteenths of an inch. So <coughs> I would suggest you make them narrower than that. Okay, now no questions. Well, they're wondering where they could post their work. Do you have a section on your website? I can't remember. Not yet? They can post it on our Facebook page, can't they? I don't know if we have that option turned on. Well, like to, to post uh, public posts. I'll, I'll check it out. And listen, how many, how many people do we have on? How many do I see here? What do you see, Megan? Slow night. 
So I hope all 195 of you are registered for our newsletter. The Colonel works extremely hard on this. It's all content. In fact, every uh, Jake, has to, Jake has to make a video for it. I have to make a video for it. And Luther writes at least one, if not two, articles. And it's always theme-based. So last month's theme was... Mortis and Tenon? I think that no. was two months ago. Planes? Oh, yeah, planes. One was Mortis and Tenon. One was... Saw workbenches. The current, the next one coming out is on measuring tools. So the only uh, commercial stuff on there is if we have a new product, we'll tell you about it. But it's also where we notify you of uh, upcoming classes and various things that you'll actually be interested in. So go to the bottom of any any page on robcosman.com and register for the newsletter. Make the colonel happy. Okay, these cuts across the end have to be perpendicular. Remember that. There is no fudging this. They have to be perpendicular. And now I want the angles <coughs> on here really nice as well, meaning I want them as close as possible. So when I'm doing this, I'm looking on the right side of the blade, and I want to see nothing but, in this case, pencil line. I want to see all of the pencil line. My angle is pre-established. right down to the line. I went over the line a little bit, but it doesn't matter. It's not that big of a deal. It was close. And you always want to be blowing the sawdust off of there while you're cutting so that it doesn't obscure your line. Tiny. Tiny? Who's Tiny? Tony. Tony. Oh, Tony Martin down in Australia? Yeah, he's here. Tony. Hey, Tony. Mate. <laughs> Tony Martin, huge supporter. In fact, thanks to Tony Ash, who was our first Aussie, our digger, Australian soldier made his way to our workshop last time because Tony took it upon himself to go out there and help us further this cause. And that's a big tip of the hat to you. But now you need to plan to come back. Now, I'm looking at that and thinking, I don't know whether that cut is, is accurate enough. This could be embarrassing. I always use a six inch square to check it just because that's what I'm accustomed to you doing. Get rid of the fuzz on the back side so that you don't obscure your, or uh, get a mark that's not accurate. You need to be within an eighth of an inch over the length of that. So that one's right on. Don't hold onto the saw and push it into it. That one's right on. So far so good, I'll check this one. That one's right on. Yeah, that's better than I expected. Was this just an opportunity to brag? Um, don't say anything yet. Because it was one of these that I was worried about. That one's off, but it's off by maybe a 32nd. I think this is the one I'm worried about. No, it shouldn't have been. That one's okay. Ooh, maybe it's this one. Okay, so that one is off. That is the one. That is off. Holy Toledo. Shoot. I don't want to do that. Well, that's right at the right at the outset. Ugh. Can't fix it. I think I think it'll be all right. Yeah, since the other one was close enough to being right on. Okay. Dave says off to the chop saw. <laughs> <laughs> Who's that? Super. Yeah. No comments from the peanut gallery. Who's the expert at the chop saw? <laughs> off the chop saw. Oh, 
look at that. Hmm. Well, that's where I stuttered with the saw, uh, with the uh, with the plane. See that? That's going to show up bad. Shoot. That is going to show up bad. I'll fix it. I'll fix it after I've cut it. I've cut a chamfer all the way around. I can take a slight pass and fix it. Get that flush with the top. Now we need to measure the saw blade. So I like to set it down on something hard. Don't measure out here. I want to measure on the main tooth. I like to be able to drop it down like that so I hear it. Careful not to twist the, uh, the tool down like that when you're tightening it. You want that to be an extremely accurate mark, and I mean extremely. You're, you're working in less than a thousandth of an inch on this. So if, you, if you screw something up, you're going to pay for it. I need my, <coughs> my uh, saw with the, my dovetail mark knife with the sawtooth blade. And that's a critical part to this. There's your, if, you, if you've never seen me cut dovetails before, that's why we cut that shoulder. And by the way, we want to make sure that all of that sawing fuzz is off of there so it doesn't give you a false reading by having some little chips of wood block that corner from being right up tight. So that's sometimes why I like to just move it like that a little bit. Get that in position. Slide it over. Now I know that's moved over. It's offset by 24 thousandths of an inch, which is what that measurement is, and hold that firmly. Now, if I can cut deep enough with this, I'm going to show you an alternative to what I've been teaching you, which is using the saw to run down through there. I'm going to reach down with my knife, lay it flat, and drag it across. And I'm going to do it multiple times. <coughs> the deeper <coughs> I can get this saw kerf in the walnut, the better chance I have of that saw kerf actually enabling me to uh, make the cut, the plum cut. Man, I bang my knuckle on that every time. Is there something I can lay over there? Well, I, I can. I have to do it aggressively. <coughs> I was actually thinking about this today and thinking I might go in there and actually sharpen these up. Oh, I've, I've got that an eighth of an inch, so that'll work great. I'm going to the right side. And sometimes you may want to go in there just so that you know which piece you're dealing with and put a T on the actual tail piece. That's the part I'm keeping. That's waste, that's waste, that's waste, that's waste. So when I make that reference or when I talk about offsetting to the left, marking to the right, I'm marking to the right of the tail. And you've got to do it on each one. And I also purposely said that when I put that knife down in, I then hold it level with the end of the pin board so as not to pick pieces off here. If you hold it like that and drag it through, you'll find you end up picking pieces of wood. You got mu much less chance of doing that. I just did it again. Much, much less chance of doing that if you... Uh, if you're holding the knife level with the top. Tom asked, do you worry about your little kerf saw tearing out the face of your pin board? That's what I just said. Oh, that's, I'm sorry. That's, that's what I was talking about. <laughs> no. <laughs> you playing on your phone, Frick, instead of... No. <laughs> that's the first? Just reading the chat. <laughs> now... Is it worth spending the extra time doing what I'm doing? I think I'm, you're gonna, when, I see, when you see how it works, you're going to say, yes, it was. Okay, we got those three done. So now we're going to go the other way. Move it all the way over. The cutter has to come up underneath. 
Got to make sure that the head of the tool is laying flat against the side. So be nice and comfortable before you slide that over until it touches. Now hold that firmly. I always make sure that the plane is far enough back that the surface area that the pressure of the hand is being applied to, which means what's touching the plane here and what's touching here, is at a minimum so that it does not move this part of this board. I offset to my right, so I'm going to go to the left side of each tail. Go down, drop it, and pull it out. And I just picked a piece of wood off of there, but it must not have been very much. So while you're doing that, we have two donations from uh, Luke Owen and Martin Boom. Luke? From where? Uh, it doesn't say. Now, just a reminder, these guys uh, donated on YouTube. And uh, if anyone else wants to donate, just head on over to the website, robcosm.com, because... YouTube takes a large percentage. So Thank you, Luke. And, th and who was the other one? Martin. I think that's how you pronounce his name. Martin Boom. Hey, Martin Boom. Uh, thank you, gentlemen. Um, if anybody else is donating, if you'll please do it on our website, because YouTube, in case you didn't hear, takes uh, 30, 30 what? It's around 33%. 33% of your donation, which is criminal. Um, there's some more T-shirts and stuff. So... Okay, let's hear him. John from Hendersonville, Tennessee. Tennessee. Lots of customers in Henderson, tenders, Hendersonville, Tennessee. Thank you, John. And then David from Beaver Creek, Ohio. David from Beaver Creek. Thank you, David. Wear it proudly. And then Daniel from Ruston, Ruston Virginia. Bought Daniel from Ruston. Ruston. Ruston, Virginia. Thank you, Daniel. Bought t-shirt and donated $50. Thank you twice, Daniel. Appreciate it. And then we get most of our, a good chunk of our vets come from Virginia. From Virginia. A huge p a number of them, actually. Yeah, and another um, Robert from Virginia Beach bought a shirt. Robert from Virginia Beach, thank you. Wear it and don't hesitate to talk about it. And I'll just mention this. We get more, we find more vets from just talking to people and having them tell us that someone close to them suffers than any other source, I think. And uh, that's because these guys who isolate themselves, the only people that know about them are immediate family. So if this program is going to grow, it's going to grow because of that. So keep talking. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to take that off. Now, uh, Jake, get in there close and look and see how much of a head start I already have. Megan, would you? Uh, you're not going to be able to, are you? Paul wants to know if you had a chance to check on the guitar yet. Yeah, uh, Paul, Paul Regney from, uh, from uh, Knoxville, Tennessee, <coughs> who's a guitar maker. I, we usually have his shirt here. Paul, I apologize. Jake must have worn it at home. Um, Paul makes guitars. Made, here it is right here. And, you know, we, for, we forgot the, uh, the, the uh, Buffalo Sabres. Here, I'll show you. There's Paul. Paul makes beautiful guitars. And he, he uh, told me this a couple years ago that if I'd give him a shout-out, he would make a guitar and donate the proceeds to the Purple Heart Project. So he has uh, he sent it up to us for us to promote it. But, Paul, I'm trying to get it across the border. So we uh, one of the guys that we play hockey with is a border... What do they call them? Border, border agent. He told us. So we ha it has to have an assigned value. If there are any woods on there that are exotic... We have to have ascites for them. Oh my goodness! I don't want to get I don't want to get caught at the border, and not have all these answers. So I got to talk to you and make sure that none of the woods in there are on any CITES list. And okay, those of you who don't know what a CITES list is, there are certain woods that uh, are protected species. So you can't just freely move them across the border without proper documentation, and it is a major pain. Anyway. So we'll figure out something. But, yeah, it's there. It made it safely. We've already been down and checked on it. You're going to need someone to play it when it gets here. Well, Frick, what have you been doing with your spare time? <laughs> now, here's the advantage of what I just did. You saw how deep those cuts are? Instead of having to go in and draw, I'm going to go in there. I can set the saw in that kerf, and it is deep enough. Now, you remember what we did last time. We reached down through like this and started sawing. Well, number one, on a, t on a uh, thin and thick piece, which is what you would find on a drawer, 
um, you really can't saw all that very that far <coughs> because of the, the how thin the tailboard is. But with this having cut as deep as it did, that is enough to control the kerf. So all I got to do is just with a really light touch, finish the kerf. It'll take it perpendicular, which is another reason why it's so critical that those cuts be perpendicular. Other words, Ahmed says to send in super secret agent Jake to smuggle it across. Uh, not Freck. No, I'm not going to jail for you. What does Ahmed say about Freck? I'm a wuss. <laughs> well, Paul will tell me what woods are in it. Ahmed will help me determine whether or not those woods are marked for ascites. And then we'll smuggle it. Uh, actually, what I need is I need to take somebody with me who can play the guitar, and they'll be just strumming all the way home, and the guy's not even going to ask question. Super Dave says that he's got the skills. Oh, <laughs> yeah, good. We've been, one, we've been looking for those skills. Well, Dave, that'll be uh, mission number one on your next trip, if we can get you across the border again. Do not try to fly without a passport. Long story. Okay, right down to the line. Now, when you're doing this, you, you cannot overpower the saw. So I am literally just pushing with the web of my hand against the back of the saw. Let the kerf take over. What are you guys doing? Pressure me for time? <laughs> Dave is so funny. I got a bunch. I surround myself with illegal aliens. Both sides of the border. All right. Now, not a bad idea at this point to identify with a pen that you can see. Red one. Identify the parts that are going to be removed. How are we on time? We're at an hour and three minutes. Oh, really? Oh, this is fun. Okay, make sure that you're down to your marks. This is where I have to put a piece of tape on because I cannot see the line. Megan, if you get a chance, would you grab a bottle of water for me, please? I'm dying of thirst. I can't even see the line to... Jake, can you see it? There it is. You got the... Wait, 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 wait. What? Why don't you put it up higher? Take your marking gauge and cut it. Oh, I can see. I mean, I'm not that blind. <laughs> just partially. Now I'm going to go in there and just finish that. Is this Sunday morning for Tony? I don't know. Yeah, it is. He's 12 hours ahead. Yeah, it's ahead than this. What uh, what you. file do you use to sharpen the dovetail saw? I'll show you. Actually, we have them. We just haven't put them on the site yet. There, it's a four-inch double extra slim taper file. That one will do. And you want ones that have nice sharp corners. And that's what happens is that they end up the ones you buy today often have, uh, they're rounded over here and they end up giving you waves instead of nice little V's. But it's an easy process, real easy. Okay, now we're going to go in and remove that waste. I'm using a uh, 12 and a half inch, no, 12 and a half TPI skip tooth blade. It's a five inch fret saw blade. And the reason I use that one, because it's the coarsest one that I can get, meaning it cuts the fastest, that I can still slide down the kerf left by the dovetail saw without wrecking it or marking it up. The smoother that sidewall is, and the smoother the matching sidewall on the tail is, 
the better the joint. You want a fret saw. If you're doing this and you're trying to use a coping saw, oh my goodness. That's why they call them coping saws. You gotta learn to cope with them. They'll drive you nuts. You want a fret saw. This little frame, in fact, we just had a really good review on our fret saw. I haven't read it yet, but Luther told me about it. And we've had people who've gone out and bought extremely expensive fret saws, fought with them, and then when it bought this one and said, my goodness, that works so much better. Small frame allows you to keep that blade singing tight. Listen to that. Paul, what key is that? I have no idea, but Paul would know. And because of that, you can keep that nice and tight. It doesn't bow while you're sawing. We simply give it a little twist right there and there, about 30 degrees. So when you're making your horizontal cut, the frame is up above the joint, so you have no restriction on the depth of throat. Okay, I'm going to set that aside. Now we'll do the same thing with the tailboard. Find any gold, Jake? Drop down. So Keith took us out to dinner Tuesday, uh, Thursday night, and we went to a Brazilian grill in, in Columbus, and the food was fantastic. My brother was appalled, my brother the carnivore, because uh, he knows I, I don't eat red meat, and I was so excited about the fact that they had this huge mound of blueberries, blackberries, strawberries, raspberries, and coconut. Oh, I think I had three huge helpings of it. What a waste. Yeah. Frick. Well, I like that stuff too, but got to have the meat. Now, what I just did is I went in there and I cut a little shallow groove on the waist side. I should have marked that. apologize I didn't. This is waist. And what that did, that allowed me, or will allow me, to come in here with my saw, and I can now reference my saw against that shoulder. And do you see how it shows a gap if I move it, if I'm not perpendicular? See the gap there? So you just do it until it's no gap. Then all you're left having to do is make a plumb cut. So instead of having to do two things, which is get it perpendicular this way and plumb this way, you're only having to do one. And in case you're wondering, my racing stripe on my bench, it, do this, Jake, sight down along there. So when I put a board in like this, to know that it's level, I just sight right along the top of this with the top of the racing stripe, and that shows me when I'm level. Now, that started completely by accident because the first time I did that on the, on the bench, my other bench, is I developed a crack right along there, just right after I built it. So the only thing I could do to salvage it was to run a router down through there and, and glue in a piece as an accent piece. And then when I discovered its use, it's like, oh, wow, this is perfect. Uh, what am I doing? Oh, this side. I'm doing all the talk and there's no questions. Come on, gentlemen this is, and ladies, this is supposed to be a two-way production. Daniel asked, uh, I put a spiral blade in my fret saw. Are there pros and cons of the two types yeah, of blades? Yeah, hate them. Absolutely hate them. What's the matter? There's a June bug in here. It's too early for, oh, no, it isn't. A, a Canadian June bug. Yeah, we all hate June bugs. Um, this is wrong. This, so let me explain something. Tracking is the, uh, the advantage of a good dovetail saw with narrow set. <coughs> what that means is that the kerf is just barely wider than the blade. So as you're making your cut, the sides of the kerf rub on the sides of the blade and they force that blade to go nice and straight. Now when you're dealing with a fret saw blade, you're not going to get much tracking because it's a very, very narrow blade. Well, a circular blade has teeth going all the way around, which essentially provides you with zero tracking 
and you're having to steer the entire way. Don't like them at all, at least not for this function. So here I am laying that in there. Do, do we need to have to bring out the assault gun? It wouldn't take out one of those. Yeah, it would. No. With that coarse salt? If she's the brave one that's going after it. Oh, I didn't realize that was open. <laughs> okay. Now, get a piece of scrap to rest the reference this on. It's Aspen, so I'm going to use my 17 degree. That's right. Huh? Why? Yeah, in case you, if you, I hope, I apologize if you've already heard this a dozen times, but in dealing with softer woods, whether it be Aspen, pine, pulp, poplar, alder, the problem that you encounter is the fra the, the uh, the fibers fracture so easy. So what I discovered is that if you ground the primary bevel back to make it extremely acute, in this case 17 degrees, that was, that was just through experimentation, you'll find that it'll slide through those woods without crushing the fiber and just leaves you a perfect surface. So what we now do is offer those, we custom grind them for you in both quarter and half, that's just all you really need. So thing is that if you plan to use soft woods at some point, you can't use these in hardwood. The edge, the edge will not hold up. I'll give you a side profile so you, can, you know what I mean. If you don't want to do it yourself, we'll do it for you. So I'm, gonna, I'm going to show you, <coughs> there's a, uh, a 25 degree beside a 17 degree. So there's very little metal out there in the end, but it'll go through this stuff without messing it, without crushing it. Now, I don't temp tempt fate, so there's too much wood here. Actually, that's not true. Because I have the little rabbit, I can actually set the chisel right there. On the other side, I'll show you what I'll do different. I go down about half the thickness, always starting on the inside. Oh boy, now I can't see. Got to get that light just right. But there is too much material there, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of a little bit of it first. And I'm going to drag the chisel till I can feel it drop. Hold the chisel, if not plumb, and slightly undercut. Not a lot, just slightly. This is the this is the uh, most problematic part of the process when I teach dovetails. If you leave a bump, you then have to come in and remove it, which takes a lot of time. It'll, it'll prevent your joint from going together. What I mean by leave a bump is your chisel is positioned like this. That's an extreme, but even if it's just a little, any bump left in there at all is going to prevent the joint from closing properly. Now you've got to go in with a chisel and somehow sitting just inside, go in there and carve all that out. Totally unnecessary because you just had to have done it right the first time, which is hold your chisel, either plumb or slightly undercut. Not a lot, slightly. So I'm gonna make sure that I don't have any material left in the corner. <coughs> And if you want, you can take your chisel, set it in there like that, and it should lay nice and flat. If it rocks, then you've got a bump that you have to get rid of. Now, out here, we want to make sure that we didn't leave any material sitting up above the gauge line. But I always have a little bit to remove with the chisel. It's often easier and safer if you do it in the vise. This allows you to come in with two hands, four left hand in my case, controls the 
depth of penetration because it parks itself yeah, against. Yeah, yeah. Is there? On the back side. Oh, yeah, maybe. I wouldn't have if you hadn't pointed out. So I'll go in there. Now, if I didn't do that, what happens is you go to put the joint together and it's going to push it apart because you're not going to compress the fibers in that direction. The only thing that can happen is they can push your joint apart and create a gap at the base of your dovetail. Nice and clean. Now we'll clean this one out and then we gotta go to work on the chamfers. Um, I can't use 17 degree on these. A little bit too much material there, so I'll go in and take a little preliminary chop first. If anybody's been waiting on chisels, we just got a huge shipment in yesterday. Oh, good. That was, uh, huh? that, was, that was a question from Jamie. I actually just told him to email you on that question, but here's your answer. What about them? Why they're delayed? <coughs> oh, well, <laughs> I wish I had the answer to that I asked. The three is it the three eighths that they've the had three back eights ordered? and the three eighths and the five eighths. Yeah, the three eight is still back ordered and the five eighths. Pardon? They've been back ordered for a long time and I can't get an answer. Sorry, Jamie. Yeah, I'm sorry. Okay, so this is the one that's hard to see. I need the light on this side, Jake, back up a little bit. You know what, we haven't done put Bob's black on there yet. Too much material right there has a tendency to push the chisel back this way because of the pressure that's built up on the, uh, on the bevel. Hey, why don't you, can see. you, can you enhance that yeah. chamfer? I'm not the chamfer. No, the well, I can't now because there's, there's too big of a gap. I could have, with something you could have done is you could have gone in. Well, I could use this. Yeah. All right, let me show you. So what I'm going to do, to see that line a little bit better. So put that, I'm, I'm using the, uh, rule to bridge the gap actually I think I can actually set this down on a bench like so is that in the right spot I hope and what I'll do is I'll just go is it between the pins. No, I can see it. Mark the other side. Or is that? Sorry? Oh, I yeah. it. Well, that one I did that nice and heavy. Where's Rick going? Turn your mic off. Now, to save time when you do this, if you didn't notice what I just did, angle your chisel 
to follow the slope of the pin. You showing them that from the right angle, Jake? You've got a slice down there anyway, you may as well do it the first time round. Now set this in. I'm going to switch to a narrower chisel so I don't have to push as much material. Couldn't you pair with that 70 millimeter? Oh yeah, I could, but I didn't. I'm just going to get rid of some of this material that has bounced back. Okay, while, do, while you're doing that, there's more t-shirt orders. So okay. Dan from Sunnyvale. California? Uh, yeah. Thank you, Dan. T-shirt. Um, Norman from Huntington Beach. Thank you, Norm. Um, Huntington Beach, California as well? Yeah. And then Guy, is that how you pronounce it? Depending on where it is. Um, from Hooper, Utah? Probably Guy. Thank you, Guy. And then um, Martin redonated his ten dollars on well donated another ten dollars on the website. Thank you, Martin. And then a T shirt. Um Richard from Costa Rica. Wow. Is that is that Richard? Mm -hmm. awesome, uh, donated a hundred dollars. Thank you, Richard. And we just sent Richard a boatload of tools. The poor guy, well, how long did he wait? Two months for him to get his tools. We had to send, oh. But they made it to him. Glad to hear, Richard, and appreciate your support. And then Dennis from Kansas City donated $100. Thank you, Dennis. And then um, Norman Olson donated $50. Thank you, Norman. Appreciate it. You guys don't realize how much this support means to these guys and to us. Us because we can run the program and them because they benefit from it. And uh, I wish I could. Uh, if you ever get a chance to talk to one of them, just ask them. They'll tell you. Now, I want to show you what I did. Sometimes I'll go in here, and if there's a little bit of material in here, I'll just purposely dig it out. And what I've got is I've got some fibers that have kind of bent and then broke. And sometimes when they spring back, they end up sticking up higher than they would normally. This ensures that I'm not going to have a problem. And I'm going to do it while I'm here anyway. Don't pry like this ever. This, 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 and this must remain crisp in order for you to have a nice, tight fitting joint. Take a solid steel square, PEC preferably. Yes, we sell them. Set it on there like that and move it side to side. And it should move smoothly. No high spots, only touches on the outside. That's how you make sure there's no bumps in the middle. Okay. Now, the tough part. Yeah, maybe you can plan on. Oh, yeah. Well, if I plan on, I'm going to take off my marks. Shoot. Okay, so this, uh, actually the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to cut a healthy chamfer down the inside edge of each tail. Now you got to make sure you're in beyond the uh, chamfer. Um, Keith from Commercial Point, Ohio, bought T-shirts. That's Keith. Thank you, Keith. Yeah. Commercial Point. And then Jeremiah um, from DeWitt, Michigan. DeWitt? Or Minnesota, I don't know. Jeremiah? I don't know my states very well. Thank you, Jeremiah. <laughs> Typical American. All you got to do is start the conversation. 
make people aware. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to go in here and get rid of, hopefully I'm going to get rid of all of the uh, gauge lines, if there are any left. Now, if I was building something, I would want to be ready to assemble. If you do this too soon and then you're still working on it, chances are you're going to come in there and damage that surface. And as I said, you cannot you cannot plane it once you've assembled the joint. Okay, so I'm feeling to make sure there are no plane tracks. Mm -hmm. What? You should sell this too. Sell it? Yeah. What do you mean? Auction off the joint. Who's going to want to buy a, a one corner? Cut by Rob on a live YouTube? Yeah. Let's get a response to that. Proceeds, Purple Heart. You know what? I'm going the wrong way. I could just feel enough resistance. I sent Angie out one of the ones we did. Did you tell them about uh, the frickin' good barbecue? Raised $800 last week for the Purple Heart Project? Last week? Last week, yeah. Was it 800 No. I wish. It was... Somewhere around there. <laughs> yeah, Frick is one of those guys that gets suckered into two ninety five. How much <coughs> does it cost? Two hundred. Well, two ninety five. Only if my wife is asking. <laughs> so Frick, who's a uh, master barbecuer, has been doing barbecues as fundraisers for or PHP. It's called the Frickin' Good Barbecue. And uh, it's hugely popular. We actually have people come back and say, that was the best burger I've ever had. He's famous for his maple bacon, which is pig smothered in actual maple syrup. That's right. And who could say no to maple bacon? Besides Rob. Me? <laughs> anyway, they love it. So if you're ever driving through... Telling he he works on Saturday and he should be getting the time off in order to do this, but he hasn't so far. It's only a couple Saturdays. So it's usually on Friday. It'll be open this coming Friday. Okay, so I'm going in and I'm going to uh, provide that little baseline. This is what takes all the time. Hope nobody's got a date tonight. We're not done. Oh, you are so asking for punishment. You wait till the haters get to you. I just can't wait for us to lose connection. <laughs> Megan brought it on. Okay. Now, <coughs> we want a 45, all of those, and I'm going to use a block plane. I'm going to sharpen the, I'm going to sharpen it. I'm going to have that tight, that throat down <laughs> tight. Do something huh? Do something what are you laughing at? You being? Super Dave again. What, what Super Dave? Don't, is don't is just. Is Megan trying to shut us down again? That's what he said. And we're making everybody hungry with uh, the maple bacon comments. I cooked it for the vets, and they what all seem to. They all seem to like it. No, oh, the, the, the back side of that. Yeah. Um, go get go get the sign, would you please? <laughs> so we can show them the sign. It's on the window. The, the freaking good barbecue sign. We'll have them drooling.
last time Frick came down, he, he brought his, not only did he have the barbecue, but he also brought his smoker. So, Frick, tell them some of the items on the menu. Uh, this past week we did... Big uh, Smoky, was that yeah, what it called? that's my new burger. It's called the Big Smoky. It's a quarter pound fresh ground beef burger, never frozen, on the smoker. It takes about an hour. Nice and juicy. Delicious. What do you smoke with? I smoke with uh, cherry wood pellets. Cherry and hickory. So if Dave was here, we'd have to smoke with snake wood, snake wood wood pellets, and vera. <laughs> and vera wood for dessert. I also did uh, smoked drumsticks and chicken wings. How'd the chicken wings go? Well, they were delicious, but nobody bought any. <laughs> nobody bought any, but they were, they were actually very good. I can't believe people didn't buy them. I should have gave out samples, that's why. The first drumsticks were raw, but the cooked ones were great. They came off the barbie. Oh, and ribs. Too. I did smoked ribs. And what? Smoked ribs. ribs. Yep. It's a big deal. A so here's the... Uh, the menu. Come here, Billy the Kid. Hold this up. This is, this is Megan's little brother who's come to visit. He's like Dave. He comes for short visits that last about what, three months, four months. So this is Frick's now, just menu. Now, I don't cook all of these things on the same day. As you can see, I cross them out, so I cook different things on different days. <laughs> Great prices, as you can see. So if you're in the area. Megan, how is he at cleaning up his mess when he's done? You're talking about her brother or me <laughs> with the barbecue? You with the barbecue. Oh, well, not very good at all. What? What? <coughs> what? Time. An hour and a half. Look, if these people had other places to go, they wouldn't be on here. May as well spend it in the shop. Okay, am I lining that up with the uh, throat? Back it off. Now I'm going to test this first because I don't want to find out the hard way on the actual project that I've got too much blade exposed. His name is actually Wyatt, but if you're Wyatt, you may as well be Billy the Kid. Same thing. Outlaw. Ooh. Too much. A little too much. And the reason I want a light pass, because I want to minimize the tearing. Wait, that's not, that's not cutting even. Okay, now I'll close that throat down. Okay, so now what we got to do is go through and cut that. Now, if I cut this way, I run the risk of breaking off pieces. You have to cut downwards. Yeah. I'm going to experiment because I may be able to do it. Right. <coughs> Why don't you go down? Well, because if I do it this way, I can do all three at the same time. So, it's in an approximate 45. I actually need some some more uh, magnification. Oh, this is great. I can see. So, I've got a light. I'm taking a light enough pass that I don't have to worry about breaking off too much on that far side. And I'm going to cut right down. Till I get to the line. Hopefully I'm keeping it at 45. I'm having to catch up a little bit. That's why I... And you don't want to go below the line because if you go below the line, it's going to show when you put the joint together. It, this goes from looking great to looking terrible. If you take the chamfer below the line, it's going to look like a gap. So it's got to be slightly above or ideally right on. So those are uh, those are exactly where I want them. Now, I, I got away with it on that side, so I'm going to get away with it on this side. And I'm just guessing on the 45. It's small enough that it won't, uh, it won't show bad if they're off a few degrees. It's Ahmed's birthday tomorrow. Happy birthday, Ahmed. And it was uh, Robert. 30. 
Uh, 52. 30, 35, 52. Again. Again. And Robert Cardell's uh, birthday was yesterday. He was hey. 50 yesterday. Hey, Robert. Are we into birthdays now? I don't know how we got on that topic, but a couple of them just passed and upcoming. Well, nice to be able to wish him happy birthday, but I can't promise we're going to sing to them. Only Angie gets her birthday sung to her. Angie is just waiting to get well enough so that she can come to work for it with us. Because Ken needs the help. He's fallen behind. And I'm using this as just a stop to work up against. Really? That's, that's good to hear. Okay, now we'll do this one. What am I hitting? Am I dog I, I shouldn't be. I'm laying next to the bench. They said Angie is glued to the screen. She yeah. loved her happy birthday song. She what? Loved her happy birthday song. Well, we love Angie. So we're even. This one is a lot harder to see for some reason. I don't recommend you do this unless the piece you're working on is really special because this is a lot of extra work. And per joint. Yeah, per joint. And you don't appreciate how difficult it is to keep everything perfect before you've even assembled the joint. Normally, you can go ahead, assemble the joint, and then do your final cleanup. Well, when you've got to do the final cleanup before you've even assembled the joint, that adds a whole new level of complexity. Now, I think I need to do a few more on this one. Okay, the rest of these I'm going to do with my chisel, and I want it to be. Appropriately You're not sharp. Do them when in place? Hmm? You're not going to do them in place? What do you mean in place? Like once you assemble it? No. No way. You mean they, the, what's left to be done? Yeah. Oh no, they have to be done right now. Before. Do you ever use wax or light oil on your saws? You, you put oil on them when you send them, right? <coughs> yeah. No, they mean sometimes. I mean, if you're down to your third sharpening and you haven't reset them, you, it may be a little bit tight. And what you can do, Alan Peters used to do this. A couple of cuts will warm up your blade. Just run your, your wax like this and then just use your fingers to do that and it'll slide right through the wood. Now, I'm not a huge fan of doing that because you're waxing what is going to be your glue surface. So you want to be careful. All right, so I need to be at about a 45 degree. Cut up so that you're not breaking off. Uh, the outside corner. 
Now, I don't have a marker on this one because I can't get the uh, I can't get the marking gauge in there. In fact, I can't even get all the way. Uh, you know what I need? Maybe I can get in there with the uh, here. what? Here the half inch? No, I'm going to use this one. I'm using my 17 degree. I'm still going to have to g do it from both sides. Would the quarter work on the bottom? No, because it's the same thing. I'm bumping into the bevel. Now I'll turn that around. Okay. Huh? And I'm using the corner of this one as my guide. Zoom in a little bit there, Jake. They want to see a little closer. Yeah, if you guys have requests of Jake with the camera, don't hesitate to ask. No more questions? Okay, okay wait. This bottom one hasn't been cut. What bottom one? That, that one? will be now. So Dave from Pickering, Ontario hey bought um, t-shirts. Thank you, Dave. And then Matt from Rio, Wisconsin. From Rio, Rio Wisconsin? Yeah, bought t-shirts and donated. Thank you. Who's that? Matt? Matt. And then Earl from, from Woodstock, Illinois. Thank you, Earl. Um, donated. Thank you, gentlemen. You know what I meant to say is that those sizes run small. They're 100% cotton. They're a really nice t-shirt. They shrink. I weigh about 180 pounds, and I normally wear an extra large. I took, large. I took large instead, and uh, when it shrinks, it's small. This hasn't, this is large, is this a large? Mm -hmm. This is large, and it hasn't been washed yet, just brand new. And it shrinks. It, it's like Super Dave always buys his clothes at Baby Gap. His, <laughs> his favorite size is medium. And uh, so. Wait, wait. What? Can you fix that so my mic works? I'm just going in and fixing this one. Oh, your mic is not working. Did I mention how important it was to have really sharp chisels? What do you want me to fix? This one. Yeah. I keep hearing you say which is. Philip wants to know if you do any other hand cut joinery other than dovetails. <laughs> <laughs> is that a bit of sarcasm? Yes, I do mortise and tenon. What else do I do? This was a this was a response to. Uh, I was asked to do this. And they asked me at just the right time. We were trying to think of what we were going to do on the next live broadcast. So I said, yeah, we'll have to finish that off. We still haven't done a mitered edge dovetail. Yeah, he'll see, he says he'll pay 20 bucks. Huh. Of course, there'll be another 20 bucks to ship it probably. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So whoever wants it, I'll, I'll s we'll, we'll all sign it and, um, and, sen and send it to you. 100 for buying the brochure. Yes. And we will pay to ship it. We'll pay to ship it for $20? It's going to cost well, us more than $20 to well ship Well, we're it. hoping the bid gets a little higher. <laughs> no. He'd get, he ordered T-shirts anyway, so he'd throw it in the box. Yeah, right.
too Come scary. On, Frank. Too scary last time. I'll just uh, remain a wuss up according to Ahmed. So Ahmed. <coughs> now this is another reason why you want flat backs on your chisel because it'll actually guide your cut. How much does a nice handle play into how effective that chisel cuts? Pardon? How much does a nice handle cut play into how well that chisel cuts? Well, I couldn't do this without a med. <laughs> it wants to be comfortable. Is that a beautiful Coco Bolo handle? My oh, goodness. Did you get a close-up on that? Mm, very close up. Tell me if you'd be interested in us selling handles like that <laughs> for your IBC chisels. We got a fifty dollar bid now. Ah. By Jack. Thank Jack you, Jack. Jack Lane. Okay, now I can't see exactly what I want here. Um, I'm looking at that little reference line that I drew on the bottom. I'm looking to make sure that the uh, the chamfer is all one plane, no bumps. It'll change your mind if I screw this up. Might be worth more. Okay, that's it. So I'm gonna give one good l once over. Check this to make sure that there's no glaring issues. I actually see a little bit of material left right down here at the bottom. Um, Jake, one of our wounded vets in our last class, is probably one of the best dovetailers, which means he's a great craftsman, that I've ever had in a class. He pulled off, I mean, there were some awesome, awesome dovetails in those two classes. His was exceptional. Um, I, when I grade it, I always start at 100, and I start knocking off points for, you know, little screw-ups. Couldn't find any on his. So he could easily do this with the same level of precision. And if he doesn't mind sharing some of the, uh, some of the credit, he has a very good saw. I'll let you guess on that one. But your saw is really the make or break on this joint. Okay, that's ready to go together. And I will, uh, I'll clean up that end too before we ship it off. Now, one last look on this. Excuse me. <clears throat> well, you know what? Now that I'm looking at this, I didn't get uh, I didn't get down far enough. Is soup still on there? Yep. Ask soup. How did? Hey, 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 that's a lot bigger than the outside. No, but the outside one isn't good. How are you? Did you get your car back yet?
<coughs> and are you meeting up with Paul to get it Monday, if you didn't? Well, if they have them in the store, you can go pick them up, but I don't can't tell you if they do. If not, we sh you, you're the one that ships stuff out. Faster than that? Order it from us and we'll sign it for you. With a little uh, note of encouragement. I'm sure a signature will help you make cut better dovetails. A few extra hundred dollars we'll send you a saw to go with it. Actually, you know what I need to be doing right now? I have, a, I have probably 12, we'll call them Ken Specials. These are dovetail saws that have cosmetic flaws. And uh, all the only problem is that when Ken was doing it, I shouldn't say this, but he accidentally... He's, he's put, listening. <coughs> what? He's listening. Be Ken's careful. on there? <laughs> this is a Ken Special. <coughs> Angie, you need to work on Ken. Can accidentally put some dovetail blades in crosscut brass, so it's the same. It's perfect saw except it says crosscut. So we sell them for fifty dollars less. So instead of two hundred and fifty, they're only two hundred. Now I think we have how many, Ken? A I'll little more than one. <laughs> Ken was just looking out for the little guys. Yes, Ken was looking out for those who need a bit of a break. Anyway. <coughs> we have probably a few. So if you're interested, there's a chance to get a dovetail saw. Actually, we have, a, we have on that same cosmetic issue, we have a couple of full-size tenons. I think we've got a couple of tenon saw, medium tenons. Any cross-cuts? We, got, we, we got a couple of cross-cuts, oh. and we have uh, some dovetail. Are they on the website? or they just No, they're yeah. not on the website. So... If you want them, you're just going to have to email us. We haven't figured out how to do that yet. We don't want to really advertise that we, we screw up occasionally. Excuse me. All right, now we've got to put this together. I need glue. Huh? Now, this is the uh, difficult part because when we do this, it's very hard to glue it. Because you cannot get glue. Don't watch what I'm doing. We cannot get glue on the outside surface. You're going to ruin that nice joint if you do. So what I found was if you put it together part way, just start it, and then reach in there. But you know what? I can't even do that because there's so little area to reach in. So I think what I'll do, I'll go in here and I'll lightly coat the sides of the pins. Oh. If if you coat the tails, all that material is all the uh, glue is going to get shoved to the top. If you coat the pins, it's going to get pushed down. If you push down too much, it's going to squeeze out. So all you can really do is go in there it'll, and but it'll get absorbed in the chamfer, right? Well, that's what I mean. You just have to you have to have a light coat. Um, now, as far as putting this together. Here's another one of those situations. You don't want to, this is very soft wood. You don't want to mar it. So I think what I'll do is I will put this together upside down where we tap on the, we tap on the bottom of the pin board. Then I can plane that off. If I, if I was, if this is already finished, I would put a block on there and tap on that and I'd be fine. So to make it a little bit easier, I think I will uh, clamp this in place so I'm not having to uh, try to balance it. 
I've got it so it's just barely hanging over. And I'll use a clamp that's got some protection on it. Jamie Newton wants to know, would your same dovetail technique be practical for larger case pieces? It seems fine for smaller boards, but what about big ones? Oh, no. The first time I, I think the very first time I did this was on that, uh, can you look, put, peek out through there, Jake? Oh, there's a, Billy, can you carefully bring in that cherry chest? That means don't bang into anything. Uh, not that you would, but I'm just warning you. It's on the f ground out there. Is there anything in the way? Oh, that table that might be in the way. I'm going to have to slide that table. Would you bring that over for me, please? Um, what? I wonder if Cherry meant anything. If what? If Cherry meant anything to him. Or Cherry? Che or chest, for that matter. Cherry's <laughs> an expensive wood. It's over. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. So you, you didn't think about your. Yeah. Oh. See it against the wall? It's kind of a reddish brown with a light top. Yeah, kind of a, a, a yellowish, light yellowish wood. Okay, thank you. So that, this was the very first piece I ever built it on. Now, they're flush now, but I'll explain that to you in a minute when, they, when he brings it. This is where I'm going to help you? Yeah. So I get that? Yeah. <coughs> so All right. What? What dovetail technique are you talking about? Huh? I think it's just the way you lay them out and stuff. I no, the... I didn't think he meant a clam bake. Did you see that? Yes, he did. That's what we're talking about. I thought he meant... He just said, would your same dovetail technique be practical for yeah, larger case yeah. pieces? I think he's talking about clam bake lays. And layout. Not necessarily... The That's what I thought he meant. Who, who asked the question? Jamie Newton. Jamie, clarify your question so we can make sure we get it answered properly, would you please? Okay, so I'm going to go in here. I'm going to stay away from the front edge, right at the front edge. Staying away from that chamfer altogether. Thank you. Did he reply yet? Uh, with the with the uh, point zero two inch offset technique. Yeah. No, oh. that's it works for all dovetails. Aaron uh, Aaron asked the same question earlier. I I didn't get to it at the time, but same idea. He's making some toy chess, so he wanted to know that. Yeah. Yeah. Once you do, once you've uh, tried this technique, you'll never do it any other way. It is awesome. It's almost foolproof. Okay, so I don't have any glue anywhere near a surface that's going to allow it to come up to the top. Super Dave has to leave, so say bye. See you, Soup. We'll be talking to you soon. Gotta go watch TV. Gotta go watch TV. S something more interesting, he said. What? Something more interesting, he said. What is more interesting than this? He's going to leave before it's done? No, he has family duties. He's <laughs> Who's counting? <laughs> Tell you, Megan, you're a glutton for punishment. Oh, this is gorgeous. It has yet to be revealed. Okay, just looking forward to get... <coughs> you ready? Definitely worth the 50 bucks. Oh, where's the bidding at right now? Still at 50. Oh, it's going to get higher. Okay, Jake, check that out. So look down on it like that. Now, doesn't that add a whole new dimension to a dovetail? By the way, there's no gaps. That's as good as it gets. No, no cuts beyond. 
check that over nice and closely. Looks like the uh, perfect addition to any shop to me. <laughs> Maybe your shop, Chris. Well, I don't have Which, one. Where's your bid? Still at 50. So, come over here, Jake. So this is, I, we don't need this now, but this is, this is what I had done originally on this piece. So all the tails and pins were proud. These two little pieces are st actually still sticking up. We're proud. But what happened is Rex, Jake's older brother, had set, oh, he had destroyed this thing. So I had to plane it in order to clean it up. Well, can't plane it, so I end up having to take, plane these right off to be flush in order to refinish it to make it look decent. So that was the first project that I actually did the proud dovetails on. Now, it's at 80. It's at 80? Mm hmm. We'll all We're all signing. We're all signing. Unless they don't want that. Because <coughs> we cannot do that. Now I'm just going to flush this up. We got 100 now from Keith. Thank you, Keith. Now I gotta go back and put that back on. Okay. One ten, one twenty five. Okay, I'll just keep playing around. <laughs> Justin asks, uh, why is it that you've done a proud dovetail? Is it purely for aesthetics? Did he just tune in? Well, maybe. I don't know. Justin, where have you been, brother? What he's trying to say is we've exhausted all the other dovetails. And <laughs> we what? We've exhausted all the other dovetails. This is what we have left. But the answer is yes. This is, a, as I said earlier, this is just a nice way of adding a new dimension to the dovetail joint. So if you're looking to just bring your work up a notch. No, it I is 100% aesthetic. Oh yeah, if anything, you're, it's going to be a little less strong simply because you can't get as much glue in it as you would on a regular dovetail. Now, just as a means of finishing that off, <coughs> I'm going to, uh, I'm just going to shoot the ends. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Where are we in the bid? Still at 125. 125. What power are your magnifiers? Um, I got two of them. You know what? It's a. It just I don't know what it is. I apologize. This is a five, and that's a three, and I don't even know what the numbers mean. Well, here it is, right here. Actually, there's a. No, it doesn't say it on there. And this is a four. Somewhere on there, it's a diopter, so it's a magnification that. And uh, it's the distance here to here, I think, is where it comes into focus. Focus. So it must be four, five inches, four inches, three inches. Makes a huge difference. To be able to see is incredible. Now, I can't cut my chamfer the way I normally do, so I'm going to do it freehand. Right there. Well, I can't set that up there because of the uh, the proud dovetail. So what I'll do is raise it up. Okay. 
We're at 145 now. Another bid, another bid from Keith. Yeah, where is it? Yeah, 145. Oh, how much? 145. 145. I wish I had one of those auction voices. Can we get one before our next <laughs> broadcast? <laughs> I'll practice. Champ for this. How many people do we have on? 229. Yeah, better. That's 229 people that abs have absolutely nothing to do on a Friday night. Saturday. Saturday night. What would Moose call them? So we organize pickup hockey on Friday night. Moose labels those the uh, the no life crowd. But you guys have a life. You're here contributing to a great cause. Okay, so that's nice and clean. Now, just as a matter of uh, showing it off a little bit better, I'm going to grab a can of Deft. <clears throat> It'll preserve it a little Why bit. Why don't you wax it? Huh? Why don't you just wax it? Well, because the Deft, I think, brings it out even better. Wax has a tendency to drying out. It'll show wet instantly, but then it fades really quick. I'll write on the inside, sign on the inside, so we'll finish that part afterwards. Where's my, uh, so I don't spray my hand. <coughs> Oh, out of gloves. Stuff dries so fast you can put three coats on in 20 minutes. All right, we're wrapping this up. So there's your proud through dovetail. No, oh, this is, is that Sean, my Yep, Sean Pedley. Yep. Sean, you can't buy this in Canada, so don't, uh, unless you can get, in fact, you can't, and they won't ship it. By in the air or by air, so the only way you can do it is you got to go across the border and buy it over there. So it's deft, clear wood finish, satin, fi uh, clear wood finish. It's a lacquer. It's satin. You can, it comes in gloss or satin. I, I prefer satin. The best part of it is that the, uh, the little nozzle they use just lays on. Oh, just lays on there beautifully. It's really nice because if you're doing small boxes, mm -hmm. it doesn't blow the box over like it does when I use my big spray gun. And the only downside to it is it has very little water resistance, but for small boxes, it is the best. We have a dozen or so cans that we keep on hand. Beautiful finish. Unfortunately, you can't get it in Canada. All right, we have uh, Joseph Minch. Has Joseph Minch. Has bid 175. And uh, if there are any more final bids. I can ship it with your saws, Joseph. All right. Any final questions? What? Yeah, I'm sure he'll be happy with me. Oh, that's probably why he's buying it. Next year. I'll ship it to you next year. Huh. No, that's coming. Any final questions on doing the... Any final questions, period? No? Um, no, I'm just waiting. Give them a couple seconds. Oh, because of the delay? Yeah. But we'll say 175 going once, 175 going twice. Where's Keith? Come on, Keith. <laughs> Go Raptors. I have to Who say that. said that? I did. <laughs> I'm sure if there's any Canadians in here, they're saying the same thing. All right. We'll we're taking the requests for our next episode, which will be 
tentatively in two weeks. So if you guys have an idea on what you want to see. There's been a few. Uh, some requested the wood fence. Some request. Well, that, that would be a, that would be a sh short. Some requested the um, shooting board. How to make a shooting board, and another requested how to make the drawer bottom plane. Okay, we'll take those into consideration. Find Any me a vet. Any further there? No, we'll Find say we'll say vet. Joseph one. Joseph, congratulations, brother. It's on its way to you. Ma Megan will have that in the mail on Monday. Megan will have that in the mail on Monday. Hopefully with the saws. I'll get another coat of oil on them and get the other one finished. I was actually working on both of them, but I wanted to have one that we could actually put oil on during this episode because I told you two weeks, three weeks ago that I'd have it ready before we broadcast. It was close. Okay, thank you, folks. Certainly appreciate your support. Have a good weekend. We'll see you in a couple of weeks.